Our policies are meant to improve the lives of Singaporeans and must take into account the views of Singaporeans. Public engagement is an important part of the policy-making process. It's neither something new nor something that we are just doing now. It's, in fact, something that we have been doing all along. But over the years, we have increasingly intensified our efforts to engage on a wide range of issues with many, as many stakeholders as possible and through various platforms, be it dialogues, web chats, town halls or discussion forums. Uh, in 2012, last year, there were more than 30 public consultation efforts across the different ministries, and we'll have a slide up that shows some examples of the various consultation exercises that took place. Uh, these are just a few illustrations. Beyond these 30 consultation efforts, there were many other more informal exchanges, focus group discussions that took place across different ministries and agencies. However, as highlighted by Mr. By Mr. Bay and some other members, there is certainly scope for us to do more and we can still do better to improve the level of citizen involvement in our policy making process. So I would like to assure members that the government will continue to look for meaningful and relevant ways to engage Singaporeans and involve them in policy making. Our aim is to give Singaporeans a sense of ownership over the issues and policies that matter to them, a sense of ownership over shaping their future. We will improve our capabilities to do this, to gather ground sentiments and public feedback. Uh, we will also instill, distill lessons from our recent experiences, including the White Paper on Population, and then see how we can do better. One key strategy for us is to enhance reach, which is now part of MCI. Uh, reach will take on a larger role to spearhead engagement efforts across the whole of government. Mr. David Ong asked about the effectiveness of REACH. In fact, um, last year, REACH alone conducted 21 engagement activities, both face-to-face -face and online. It received an average of 5,500 feedback inputs a month from Singaporeans. And this is a six-fold increase in feedback received since REACH was first launched in 2006. So REACH has done quite a fair bit, and it will continue to do more. It will step up its efforts face-to-face -face with various segments of the community in terms of engagement. Uh, for example, this year, REACH will be launching a series of dialogues for professionals, managers, executives and technicians, or the PMET group, to delve deeper into issues facing this group who make up more than half of Singapore's workforce. REACH will also make greater use of social media platforms, including Facebook, uh, to make it even more convenient for Singaporeans to provide feedback and for REACH to stay connected with them. Besides working through REACH, MCI itself will also help to coordinate the building of public communication and engagement capabilities across all government agencies. Uh, Mr. Singhanton mentioned this and highlighted the role of our information service officers. And indeed, an important group of people who are crucial in our public engagement efforts are our information service officers. Uh, they form the backbone of our public engagement efforts. We are proud of them and we are building them up and investing in their capabilities. As Mr. Singh mentioned, we have appointed a new Chief of Government Communications uh, that has brought a more professional expertise and experience to the service and leadership to the service. And we will continue with that leadership um, to invest in the service, to build up capabilities, um, to coordinate efforts across ministries and also to improve our ability to do things like sensing of information on the ground, analyze information, and better craft messages to different audiences. Uh, some members, Mr. Zaki Muhammad, Mr. Bayam King, have shared how people sometimes question the value of giving feedback to the government. And I understand the concerns. Government agencies can and must do more to consult at the early stages of the policy process, upfront and Consider all public inputs given seriously and with an open mind. Agencies also need to do more to close the loop after the feedback has been given to explain the reasons for their decisions so that people can understand how their inputs help to shape the final decision. Some ministries are already doing this, um, but clearly we need to level up the efforts across all public agencies. And so through REACH spearheading our public engagement efforts through the information service, we intend to do that. At the same time, 
I think we must also recognise that consultation is also a two-way street. Uh, just as the government needs to be open to different views, so too must the participants of public, engage, of public consultation. Uh, individuals and civic groups are entitled to expect every serious proposal to be considered. But they must also accept that not all suggestions can be accepted by the government, especially when there are different and often competing viewpoints among Singaporeans. So the key to effective consultation is that all parties must take part in it with a spirit of mutual respect for the legitimacy of the process and the perspectives of all participants. And there are many examples of consultations undertaken in this spirit which have led to important changes and shifts in policies. So Mr. Bay asked about examples, and let me cite just two of them. For example, the enabling master plan which was initiated by then MCYS. That was a master plan to address the needs of persons with disabilities and their caregivers. And the master plan was very much the result of a process of co-creation involving NGOs and other stakeholders. Another example is when MOH recently extended MediShield to cover newly diagnosed congenital and neonatal conditions. This also arose from suggestions, including those made during a public consultation on enhancements to MediShield, and also uh, suggestions from participants at the Our Singapore Conversation or OSC sessions. Going forward, the OSC will be an important process for us to discuss the broader directions for our nation and how policies should change to support these new directions. We have had many organisations and interest groups organise their own ground-up dialogues as part of the OSC. You will see the slide here. Uh, you have Minister Grace Fu doing a session in Yihua uh, with the elderly, with senior citizens. And the other picture is one of an OSC uh, session held in London with overseas Singaporeans. But there have been many OIC sessions, and through this process, we aim to involve as many Singaporeans as possible from a wide cross-section of society. One participant said of her experience in the OIC, and I quote, I must say that my experience of the SG conversation opened my eyes to other Singaporeans. I do encourage people to go and speak their minds and learn from fellow Singaporeans. If we are all Singaporeans, we do have a duty to engage in a dialogue about our future. I think it's very encouraging to hear this, and indeed we have heard similar feedback, not just this one, but from many other participants in the OSC. And this is something that bodes well for our maturing society, because for any democracy to, to work, for our democracy to work, our citizens must be prepared to engage deeply on the issues that matter to them. And we already see this happening, as Mr. Zaki Mohammed said, the feedback on which, in terms of quality, is getting better, in the letters columns of our newspapers, in various online platforms, we now see more Singaporeans debating with each other, advocating their respective positions. Sometimes before the government agency has time to reply to a letter, you see a counter view from another Singaporean. And so these are positive trends. They demonstrate our people's desire to play a part in shaping the future of Singapore through robust dialogue and conversations, not only with the government, but also with each other. Sometimes passions are aroused during these debates, and that's okay, because the issues we are discussing are serious issues that affect the lives of all Singaporeans. But it's important that we do not vilify those who disagree with us or tear down each other in the process of debate. Ultimately, we all want the best for our country and for Singaporeans. And at the end of, at the, end of the day, we must be able to look past all of our differences, all of our disagreements, and still forge a common future for there are more, far more things that unite us than divide us. And that's what we are seeking to do in the OSC. So I would encourage all Singaporeans to participate actively in this process of a national conversation. Uh, we are now moving to the next phase of the conversation where we will dive deeper into the concerns raised during the earlier phase of a more open dialogue. And there will be a range of issues to discuss in various forums and sessions where people can sign up to join the conversation in shaping our future Singapore. Madam Chair, I would like to assure the House that the government is committed to consult as widely as it can, to listen deeply and to incorporate the views of Singaporeans when formulating its policies. I acknowledge there are still areas to improve, but through the OSC, through efforts by REACH, through MCI's own information service officers, and through the efforts of all public agencies, we will do more to promote public engagement. One area which members talked about, and I think we can 
do more because we are somewhat behind the curve is in social media. We recognize that new media usage is rising and that more and more Singaporeans now turn to online platforms for information and news. And that's why, as many members observe, you will see government agencies now stepping up their online presence. It's not limited to our ministers on Facebook because you also see many agencies using a combination of Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, mobile applications and digital platforms. It's, the statistics show a, a, an increase across the board. But beyond the statistics, it's actually how agencies actually use these platforms. So I'll cite some examples. Uh, the C Singapore Civil Defence uses several social media platforms to communicate with the public. Uh, it has a Facebook page to reinforce the importance of fire safety and to share information on the work of SCDF personnel. And it also uses Twitter to provide the public with time-sensitive updates during emergencies. The Singapore Police Force has a Facebook page with a very strong 300,000 fan base. It also uses that to reach out to the community to help solve crimes and ensure public safety with timely advisories. The government.sg website also has mobile applications for the Apple and Android platforms, so we don't take sites. Uh, to tap on the increasing popularity of tablets such as the iPad, uh, we will be launching an upgraded government.sg application. And Madam Chair, with your permission, I will show a short video clip on this. Yes, please. So with the new application, we can provide users access to the latest news updates, services across all government agencies from a single platform. Our subscribers will get latest news alerts, videos, publications, government data, and will be able to share them easily with friends online. Parliamentary debates are also an important way for the public to know more about policies, and I think Mr. Zaki Muhammad alluded to this earlier. And I'm pleased to inform members that MCI will work with Mediacorp to enhance coverage of parliamentary proceedings. We will work with Mediacorp to upload all footage from Question Time to CNA's microsite, and we will also look into lengthening the archival period for parliament videos from the current one month. This will allow the public to fully follow the debates at a convenient pace. The government will also put out more short video clips using multimedia to explain issues to the public something that Mr. Zaki Mohammed has also suggested. Last year, for example, we produced many videos that touched on a wide range of topics, from the GSD voucher to the Green Man Plus scheme for pedestrian crossing, and we will have more this year and the years to come. But communication online is not the same as our traditional broadcast medium. Social media is not a one-way broadcast. It is not a monologue. Rather, it is about dialogue, it is about participation, it is about engaging in an ongoing and meaningful, meaningful conversation with stakeholders. And this is where I think some public agencies are already doing this, but the efforts are still uneven across the government. So we will need to build up capabilities across all agencies and be able to engage Singaporeans actively through social media. An important part of this engagement is to ensure that our conversations are grounded in facts and that our citizens are well informed on policies, a point that several members also highlighted. We already have websites like Factually where people can find key facts relating to government policies. And other agencies also have similar sites like HDB Speaks by HDB and Mythbusters by MOT. But platforms alone are not sufficient. It's one thing to have the platform where you clarify facts. I think it's more important to engage online, to be present, to engage so that any distortions, half-truths or untruths can be corrected quickly and we can all agree on a certain set of facts to debate from. While we do more through social media, Mr. Seng Han Tong also reminded us that there are Singaporeans who may not be comfortable using such platforms and we need to be mindful of these uh, Singaporeans and how we get our message across to them and how we engage them. 
So I would like to assure Mr Singh and members of this House that the government will continue to leverage on both traditional and digital platforms to ensure that we engage with a wide spectrum of Singaporeans. We recognise that there's, there are very diverse audiences and our messages have to be customised and better targeted at these different audiences in order to resonate with them. And that's something we will be mindful of. We will also intensify our ground efforts to reach out to Singaporeans and engage them directly, face to face, whether it's through town halls, policy forums or dialogue sessions. I believe many members or many colleagues in this House are already doing this and we will continue to do more. Madam Chair, public engagement is not a one-off effort. It is an ongoing process to build relationships between the people and the government so as to shape better policies and improve the lives of all Singaporeans. The government will do its part by stepping up our engagement and communication efforts so that together with all Singaporeans, we can build a better Singapore for the future.